because effectively the Attorney General, um, it's his office, has accepted the obligation. So I guess what it is, it's like a catch-all in their system. It's the same as maritime liens. Under their system, maritime liens, Mari Timio, Mari being sea, Timio being fear, fear of the sea, is the highest form of lien. And the reason it is, is that maritime represents the Holy See. So when, when money is issued as being um, monetized maritime bills of exchange, which is exactly what our notes are, they're actually monetized maritime bills of exchange, uh, leaned against the SESTA KV, which is the bond held by the bank, which is the bond against us, um, by Roman law, that is by the law throughout the world, they cannot be dishonoured as legal tender. And that's why when you have a legitimate note, it cannot be denied. It can't be denied. So these are kind of like rules of their system. And I've, I've covered a bit of it before, and I know it's a bit of a long-winded answer, but hopefully that answers the question for Andy YKY about the obligation of the bankers. And I'd like to talk a bit more about that in other calls, but I hope that answers for you, Andy YKY. Let's see. Why is the Constitution, this is from Who Knows Truth, why is the Constitution a testamentary trust and not a living trust? Good question. Look at the words. For posterity. So what do we mean by for posterity? And I don't have the exact words here in front of me, uh, but when you read those words, if anyone wants to punch that into um, the, the question there, then I can uh, answer it. But effectively, the words are phrased as testamentary. I'll give you an example. Those three papal bulls that I've mentioned a few times now that are the original testamentary trusts to claim the property of the world have a particular phrase at the introduction of them and that particular phrase says for a perpetual remembrance. That phrase tells you that it is also a testamentary trust. Okay? So again, I hope that answers for you. That's true. And thank you. Here we go, next question. Uh, this is from uh, Ron D48. Are the notaries and the rest of the support structure in place? No. And I'll tell you a, a change that we've been discussing, and I don't think anyone would be, um, uh, be a problem. And it actually follows into the next question, an excellent question from Michael, which I'll get to in a sec. The original structure, as we're putting this forward, was in getting a group together, building a hierarchy, and then rolling it out. Like, you know, I guess anyone would think, we've got an idea, let's get a group together, let's organically grow, get good people together, and off we go. We have met obstacles along the way. And I think some of those obstacles actually have become divine providence, and I'll explain why. How many hierarchies of uh, founded structures, whether it be a, a society, and we're not this, but say a religion or cult or anyone else, how many of those structures have lived from that beginning uh, and not been overtaken by a bigger entity to be consumed or corrupted? Now, when I asked that question and then went back through history, I came to an appalling statistic. Not one structure ever formed by a hierarchy has survived without being overtaken. Not one. So the idea of uh, finishing off the structure, getting all the roles fulfilled, building the hierarchy became a bit of a mute point because in that it said, sure, maybe the next 10 years this could grow. You could end up having a lot of people. Hey, the Mormons have a lot of people. So, you know, if we're talking about numbers, if you had a million people supporting you, you know, Wow, if you're at the top of the tree, that's great. Would that guarantee success? Absolutely not. Would that guarantee that there's some bigger fish in the pond that will take you over? Absolutely yes. So we, we started to think about different strategies and different structures in the last few months, which is why you start to see these calls and, and see a different approach. What is another example in nature where the consumption of the entity is, uh, is almost slipped on its ear. And it causes the virus, in this case, a knowledge virus. Now, what does a knowledge virus do? Well, a knowledge virus comes with a, a preset structure of DNA or RNA knowledge. But then what it allows is it allows that to be uh, um, 
retroactively um, added to and it comes in and it implants that knowledge in the existing host rather than having some central organisation. It promotes organic communities. It doesn't place ego in front of knowledge. It's not about promoting a cult of Frank or a cult of Eucadia or some pyramid. It's about helping people wherever they are in the world take that knowledge and apply it. So it's then using the strength of the knowledge to connect the pieces together and not the physical impress of hard hierarchy structures to coordinate it. So uh, that in a sense is answering, uh, I hope, the question of Ron D48 and getting into part of what Michael asked. So it's not fully in place and we now intend to modify our approach based on what I said. Now, in terms of uh, the question from Michael Morris, which was the next question, who's the trustee for One Heaven Testamentary Trust? Who would stop it from being overrun? Uh, they're all ecclesiastical roles. So just as we see the existence, existing system using ecclesiastical offices like the Rota, like President Lincoln, and others to fulfil active office roles, it makes perfect sense that One Heaven being a spiritual and a temporal organisation, that our most important roles are spiritual and that when they do need to come to the temporal, we make them very narrow periods and highly protected. So, Michael, I hope you'll see that reflected in the involvement of the covenant. Okay, so that was a question, a couple of questions. There. Let's see another question. Guest 46 says, do I need to register a true trust or superior trust with the Acadian Society as in positive law? Uh, can I have these trusts to open property, open bank account? Okay, <clears throat> we're going to modify the, you know what I said, we're going to modify the um, couple of things in, in uh, Eucadia as far as um, dates to register. It is ultimately important that, that, that there is a way of getting information back to a central point, but not to conduct and management of communities. That's merely to ensure that there is some central record uh, because central records is part of the authenticity um, that underpins uh, the law, particularly if we're saying that the register of one heaven uh, is being maintained temporarily as well as spiritually as a central register. So do I need to register your, your divine trust and your true trust are already in existence? So... Ultimately, ultimately, it's important that, that we can have some record come back, but it is not a condition of its validity anymore, and that will be a modification in positive law. It's not a, a condition of a superior trust being registered for it to be valid. So long as you have your trust number, um, then you are creating a, a, a valid trust. Can you own property? Absolutely. Well, you own property. I mean, what's in a true trust is... A divine right of use. It's the highest form of property there is. Now what I say the system is based on at the moment, it's claiming the highest surety is our souls. So what does a true trust hold? It holds divine right of use. Of what? Of divine property. What divine property? Of divine personality. So your true trust is holding the most valuable kind of asset that the current system recognises. Uh, can you own other things like locations and and, uh, and homes and, and other things? Absolutely. That comes in the creation of the superior trust that hang off the true trust, and that is the process that we want to help people and in encourage people. Thank you, Count. Absolutely. That's what I was talking about when we spoke about opening a special deposit rather than a standard deposit account. What do you mean by special deposit to deposit? Well, the trick is when you open up a deposit account, the word deposit actually means conveyance. So when you open up a deposit account, really what you're doing is conveying property to the bank. The bank assumes legal title, and the benefit they give back to you is that they will normally give you equal to what you put in. But that's a condition. The bank can change that at, at will. The bank can choose to refuse to give back what you think is your property. Why? Because it's not your property anymore. That's why when banks close, people don't get their property back. Why? Because it's not their property anymore. The only time a bank can't do that is when you open up a special deposit account and the special deposit simply means that 
that is not conveyed to the property of the bank. They are administering the property on your behalf. Um, so I hope I answered those questions for you, guest 46. Um, guest 26, I have a statement in question, but I'm using x -Lite, so I have to wait to get... Okay. <laughs> um, who knows truth? Asked another question. Can a living, breathing being use the UCC in the way you suggest, the deed poll, and not be considered a person in the eyes of the system? Okay. Uh, so can a living, breathing being use the UCC in the way you suggest and not be considered a person in the eyes of the system? So a person is a, is a, is a fictional construct. And the way to view it is that um, a person, personality in their system comes as the um, trust corpus. So the trust corpus is called also the body corporate or the corporation and they regard it as having personality. So that's why a corporation is considered a person. And of course they also say a natural person also has personality. Person coming from Latin being actor. Um, the only time a person is really a bad, while they created this concept, it actually in uh, commercial trade is not necessarily a negative thing if you are coming from a position of holding a trust. The only time that um, fictions become a problem, and I know people have a natural um, uh, visceral negativity towards a system that has basically created this fictional world of, of evil around them. And I understand that. But you've got to understand that life is also a dream. And as a living dream, everything is fictional. So you can't combat a world of fiction by refusing to build an alternative world of fiction. What we're trying to do is, is turn a, a fictional world that they've created around on itself by ensuring our position in that fictional world has equal, if not greater, status than what they claim. So uh, if you refuse to um, consider your trust position, which is created for you, and you want to stand in the role of being a living being, then you are making it really, really, really hard for yourself because there's no real way that you can trade, survive, or, 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 or live in that system. You can opt out and build a commune. You can opt out and try and survive. But at the end of the day, it's not really addressing the root of the problem. You're abandoning the, uh, the Colosseum and therefore um, basically consenting. I understand the feeling, though. I really do. And, and the involvement of this actually went through that process. We, we said we're not fictions. We're, we're, we're living flesh. But when you look at the logic behind it, the logic basically says the divine creator owns everything. We can't, there's no law in physics that says I can own anything. So if the divine creator is the only thing that can own anything, then automatically we're starting to get into a fictional world of how do we manage right, how do we manage claim, uh, and that is through the concepts of fictions. So, you know, their lawyers thought of that a long time ago. They came up with their system. They use it as a control. Let, let's, let's not abandon the field. Let's understand what they've done and, and reclaim what is ours. So I hope I've answered it. And I, I hope that that's, that is an answer for you. Uh, so what if I'm not a property owner? Guess 17. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, property, we said, is a fictional concept. So that um, property is the, is the concept, the fictional concept where they're using to control the world. So if you want to opt out of the world, absolutely. Let the world fend for itself and, and find an island and hope like hell that they won't come in and, uh, and claim you as their property. Um, people have done that. You know, people have gone and lived in a commune and that commune has lived for 20 years, 30 years, and then, you know, inevitably what they like to do is they like to go in and smash the commune. And uh, if you look at history, you find this. You know, most communes are lucky to exist in relatively har relative harmony for 20, 30 years. Some even longer. And then what they like to do is come and reap. And when they reap, they're coming to close it down. So I understand that too. I'd, I'd love to 
get away. 